WNBA legend Sue Bird doesn't believe the vitriol being leveled at the league's stars is a new phenomenon. The things that have held back women's sports are racism, sexism and homophobia amongst other things, Bird said on the newest episode of A Touch More with co-host Megan Rapino. But that is the starting point, and that is the lens with which you have to look through a lot of these things. The retired point guard went on to add that Indiana Fever rookie Caitlin Clark has become an avatar for an issue that existed when she arrived in the league. Racism has been impacting the WNBA well before this year. This is not a new thing, Bird said. In that way, I do think Caitlin's being used as a pawn. Caitlin didn't bring racism to the WNBA. This has been happening. And that I think is what's been such a shock for all of us, that other people are surprised. We've been trying to tell you. The 13-time All-Star wanted to steer clear of applying blanket judgments to fans of the Fever and or Clark and those who have just started following the WNBA. She said that kind of mentality has to go. It has to go because it's not the Fever fans, it's not Caitlyn fans, Bird said. That is a large group of people. Let's stick with the Fever for a second. That is a large group of people. And what we're talking about, as we get into the meat of this, we're talking about the faction of that group that is pushing racist agendas and is pushing hate and creating divisiveness online, acting as fans, acting as Fever fans, acting as Caitlyn fans. To Bird's point, societal factors have affected the WNBA ever since its launch in 1997. ESPN's Michael Volpel wrote how for years players felt uncomfortable publicly coming out about their sexuality. Katie Barnes of ESPN spoke to a researcher in 2022 who said black players received less media coverage than their white peers and that the gap was even more stark with black players perceived to be masculine. The difference now is that more people are attending and watching WNBA games than ever before, thanks in part to Clark's arrival. The trend was happening before she entered the league but has spiked across her first season. With that, the WNBA has firmly entered the culture wars with bad faith actors using Clark and women's basketball to drive their own engagement. Commissioner Kathy Engelbert opened herself up to criticism during a September interview on CNBC's Power Lunch when asked about the darker and more menacing tone in the discourse. Engelbert failed to outright condemn the racism and said rivalries can help bring more attention to the WNBA. Tara Jackson, executive director for the Women's National Basketball Players Association, made it clear the players' union was disappointed with Engelbert's response. Engelbert subsequently said in a letter to players that she missed the mark in the interview, per Voipel. The WNBA issued a statement on September 25th to say it will not tolerate racist, derogatory, or threatening comments made about players, teams, and anyone affiliated with the league. The league also said its security is actively monitoring threat-related activity and will work directly with teams and arenas to take appropriate measures, to include involving law enforcement, as necessary. The door has been left wide open for Caitlin Clark to join the expanded Unrivaled series. The new three-on-three women's basketball league, co-founded by WNBA stars Nafisa Collier and Brianna Stewart, tips off in Miami in January and already boasts an impressive roster of players, including Clark's Indiana Fever colleague Lexi Hull. She has joined the likes of Collier, Stewart, Angel Reese, Kelsey Plum, Chelsea Gray, Arika Gumbawale, Jewel Lloyd, Kate Martin and Brittany Griner in signing up. Originally slated for 30 players, it was announced on Thursday that it had expanded to 36 after surpassing its initial revenue goals, according to President Alex Basel. Revenue and interest would almost certainly swell further if organizers can lure Clark, whose rookie WNBA season after being drafted by the Fever coincided with a huge growth in viewing figures on ESPN. While it is unclear whether the 22-year-old will sign up, a place has been left open for her. In an 11-word message, Basil declared, we're always going to have a roster spot for Caitlin Clark. Via Sportico, Basil added, we're not applying a full court press the way people think. We are letting her decompress from basketball. She knows that we have a spot for her when she's ready. We have an obligation to continuously add the best of the best wherever we can. Clark has a few more weeks to make up her mind, with the final 36-player lineup due to be confirmed on November 20th. She has reportedly received a huge offer which includes $1 million, £770,000, plus equity and revenue sharing.
That far outweighs her base salary during her rookie season with Indiana, where she earned $76,535 pounds). The bulk of her income comes from endorsements with blue-chip companies like Swoosh, State Farm, Gatorade, Wilson, Bose, and Buick. There is a new professional league coming to women's basketball this offseason. For decades, women's basketball stars had to take their talents overseas once the WNBA season ended to make a decent wage. Now, fans will be able to watch their favorite WNBA players compete in the United States in the offseason, thanks to the unrivaled startup league ignited by superstars Nafisa Collier and Brianna Stewart. What is the unrivaled? How will it work and who is participating? The Sporting News takes a deep dive below. Unrivaled is a new 3x3 women's basketball league co-founded by WNBA stars Nafisa Collier and Brianna Stewart. Its inaugural season will tip off in January 2025 in Miami. Unrivaled will give WNBA players an off-season league in the United States so they don't have to play overseas to make a decent wage as a professional basketball player. The league is also setting a record with the highest average salaries in women's sports history. All 30 initial players will receive equity ownership, per the Unrivaled website. On October 31st, Collier announced that the league will house 36 players, not 30 as initially planned. With unprecedented salaries and ownership share for the players, Unrivaled is another example of the exploding interest in women's basketball. Unrivaled is a 3x3 league that will be played on a compressed full court of 70 by 50 feet. Games will be four quarters with a game clock and a shot clock. There will be six teams of five players. Each team will have two subs, a head coach, an assistant coach and a team manager. The six teams will play in a round-robin schedule and the top four teams will advance to the playoffs. The season will include eight weeks of total play, including the postseason. Unrivaled will also feature a 1v1 single elimination tournament played in February to determine the best 1v1 player in the world. League co-founder Collier recently revealed on X that the winner of the 1v1 tournament will earn a massive grand prize of $250,000 minimum. Unrivaled is trying to recruit Caitlin Clark to its league, Front Office Sports reported on October 17. After her Rookie of the Year season with the Fever, Unrivaled is trying to get the star to join some of her WNBA peers with a Lionel Messi-like offer similar to Inter Miami CF's successful bid to sign the Argentine star, which included partial ownership and broadcast revenue sharing. Unrivaled could offer Clark a $1 million salary, equity in the startup league and revenue sharing, Front Office Sports reported on October 23rd. Clark would be a massive addition for the league, as she's helped spark an increase in TV ratings in the WNBA. She could do the same with Unrivaled, which recently earned a media rights deal with TNT Sports, in its inaugural season. During a previous Q&A on X, league co-founder Collier sparked some speculation about the WNBA star's participation in Unrivaled. A user asked Collier for a hint on the number of rookies playing in the league. Collier responded with a gif of Snoop Dogg holding up four fingers, leaving fans excited about the potential of Clark's inclusion as one of the four. WNBA star Angel Reese has already been confirmed as one of the rookies, and Collier spoke highly of Reese's decision to play from a business standpoint. Las Vegas Aces rookie Kate Martin, who is one of Clark's best friends, also hinted that she might be joining the league in an interview. With the league expanding to 36 players instead of the 30 initially planned, that offers even more opportunity to Clark to join Unrivaled's core. Unrivaled will continue to recruit Clark, but it remains to be seen if she'll officially take up an offer. Unrivaled has been doing an awesome and entertaining rollout on its X page to announce the inaugural season's participants. The social media account has tweeted gifts or hints to tease the next player announced, revealing the league's talent one by one. You can find an updated list of confirmed players for Unrivaled's inaugural season below. Additionally, UConn star Paige Bookers is expected to join a team after signing a nil deal with Unrivaled. While Caitlin Clark seems cool as a cucumber off the court, she has had moments of fiery passion on the court in her first WNBA season. Unfortunately for the Fever rookie, sometimes these moments manifest as an angry frustration, which can get Clark into trouble with referees. The 22-year-old found out early on that some of her actions, from mouthing off to officials to tussling with opposing players, would result in her collecting technical fouls. 
While Clark has improved in that regard since her first few weeks in the WNBA, she still has picked up more technicals than nearly every other player in the league in 2024. The more technicals a WNBA player collects, the closer that player is to facing a suspension for foul accumulation. With one month remaining in the season, Clark is towing that line, and whether she crosses it could greatly affect Indiana's postseason hopes. Here's everything to know about whether Clark will be suspended due to the WNBA's technical foul rules. Clark picked up her fifth technical foul of the season Sunday in the Fever's 92-75 win over the Storm. Shortly after missing a three-pointer in the third quarter, she threw her fist into the padding below the basket while waiting for Aaliyah Boston to inbound the ball. I got a technical for basically being mad at myself, she told reporters after the game. Had nothing to do with my team, had nothing to do with their refing, had nothing to do with the other team. The WNBA mandates that once a player or coach picks up seven technical fouls in a season, that individual is suspended for one game. After the initial suspension, every other technical, 9th, 11th, 13th, etc., results in another one game suspension. Additionally, fees mount the more technicals a player receives, $200 for the first three, $400 for techs 4 through 6 and $800 for 7 and above. With five technicals as of August 19, Clark has 12 regular season games remaining to try and avoid picking up two more before she would be forced to take a brief hiatus. Fever head coach Christy Sides commented on the situation after her rookie collected her most recent technical Sunday, saying they are going to have a conversation, and she doesn't need Caitlin to sit out a game. Clark's first three technicals all came within two weeks of the start of the season, and it took her two plus months to pick up two more. Nevertheless, she will have to be extra careful for the next month to ensure she doesn't find herself sidelined while the Fever attempt to make a playoff run. Clark isn't the only player who should be worried about their technical count, Diana Taurasi and Natasha Cloud each have six and are just one bad decision, or slighted referee, away from sitting out a contest. Here is the current WNBA technical foul leaderboard, including both coaches and players who have received multiple penalties. One of the most fascinating storylines of this WNBA offseason is the unrivaled basketball league's reported attempts to get Indiana Fever superstar Caitlin Clark to join their league. Earlier this month, it was reported by front office sports Michael McCarthy that, fresh off agreeing to an inaugural TV deal with TNT Sports, the new league will try to recruit Clark in the coming weeks, sources with knowledge of the strategy tell front office sports. Get ready for the full court press, predicted one source in the article. McCarthy later reported, the startup league's full court press to recruit Clark is similar to the push by Major League Soccer's inter Miami CF to woo Messi in 2023. Messi's deal included a contract valued at $150 million, partial ownership, and other financial incentives. Apple even agreed to share revenue from MLS season pass with the seven-time Ballon d'Or winner, per McCarthy. Since then, Unrivaled has announced multiple of Clark's closest friends as roster members, such as former Iowa teammate Kate Martin and current Fever teammate Lexi Hull, and just recently announced that fellow Fever teammate Aaliyah Boston would also be joining the league. While Boston was Unrivaled's 30th and presumably last rostered player, Unrivaled also announced on Thursday that they'd be expanding their roster to 36 players and that, we're always going to have a roster spot for Caitlin Clark, all of these recruiting tactics seem to be working in luring Clark to unrivaled, as an October 31st article from Sports Business Journal's Tom Friend revealed. But unrivaled has also strategically signed two of Clark's closest friends. To recent contracts, and, according to sources, speculation is Clark is leaning 60-40 to saying yes, Friend wrote. Comes down to mental health, stress or playing ball, which she loves, one source said of Clark in the article. She has not decided yet. I think, in, a few weeks we will know. Therefore, it sounds like there's better than a 50% chance Clark will decide to do Unrivaled. Clark joining Unrivaled sometime over the next month or so would be an early holiday season present for women's basketball fans while also being massive for the new 3x3 league's future. Caitlin Clark could still commit to playing in Unrivaled after receiving a $1 million offer as the new league has expanded its player pool to 36.
Unrivaled, a new 3x3 Winter Basketball League co-founded by WNBA stars Brianna Stewart and Mafesa Collier, announced that 36 players would now be signed ahead of January as opposed to the previous limit of 30. Aaliyah Boston of the Indiana Fever was announced Thursday as the 30th player to sign, leaving six more spots should Clark decide to commit. We're able to do this because we outperformed our financial projections, Collier said in an announcement video. So now we get to do something that we wanted to do in the future which is give more people spots in Unrivaled. Clark is yet to publicly confirm her participation, but due to her influence, she would be a major addition to the new league. As a result, Clark has been offered upwards of $1 million to play in the new Winter League which is set to start in January 2025. The WNBA has seen a surge in ratings ever since Clark entered the league as the number one pick of the 2024 WNBA draft, and Unrivaled is keen to ensure that viewership carries over. According to Front Office Sports, not only has Clark been offered over $1 million to play, she could receive a percentage of ticket sales. The salary would be 1,200 times her WNBA rookie wage of $76,535 per season, but Unrivaled will receive major benefits should Clark partake. The average salary offered to the 30 participants stands at $250,000, but for just eight weeks of action, it's significantly higher than the WNBA average. All players who have committed to playing in the inaugural season will receive equity in the league, with players such as Angel Reese, Kelsey Plum, Arika Gungawale, and Jackie Young already signing up. Following the expansion there will be six teams made up of six players, with all games set to be played in Miami. One of the main narratives of the 2024 WNBA season was Clark and Reese continuing their college beef, and that could carry over into Unrivaled. For now, Reese is grateful for the opportunity she's been handed by Stewart and Collier and believes it could be a game-changer for women's basketball. Staying in Miami from January to March without heading overseas was a major draw, Reese told the Chicago Tribune. I never planned on going overseas. Knowing two great players like Brianna and Nafisa are behind this, who wouldn't want to be part of it? I knew they'd bring in more top talent. Many of us dread going overseas, but some have no choice. Earning six figures here in just three months is a game changer. Plus, 3x3 three three basketball is something I love. It's a chance to hone individual skills because the game exposes everything. As Caitlin Clark prepares for what may be her final game of a historic WNBA rookie season, many are reflecting on a campaign of tremendous highs and shattered records. Clark led the league in assists while setting the WNBA record for the most times in a single season. She helped guide the Indiana Fever back to the postseason for the first time since 2016. However, many of Clark's critics point to one nagging habit plaguing her since her days at the University of Iowa, a propensity for technical fouls. Clark finished her season with six technical fouls, just one away from an automatic suspension, though all technical foul penalties reset for the playoffs. How much are WNBA players fined for techs? Players are charged $200 for the first three technical fouls, $400 for four through six, and then $800 for each one after six. That's a hefty chunk of change for a player on a $76.535 rookie salary, though Clark earns more through endorsements with brands like Gatorade and State Farm. And Nizzy Clark, Caitlin's mother, did not appreciate the mounting technicals. I don't want to be getting technicals at all and my mom doesn't want that for me, either," Clark told reporters ahead of the playoffs. And I don't want to pay any more fines, either, she admitted. So I'm done with that. Clark tied with Mercury guards Diana Taurasi and Kalia Copper for second place in the WNBA with six technical fouls, only trailing fellow Mercury guard Natasha Cloud with seven. However, the Indiana Fever rookie doesn't believe she's at fault for all of them, it stinks because I feel like half of my technicals this year, I got one for that inadvertent contact to the face in the Minnesota game and then two for hitting the stanchion of the basket, Clark said. One was a complete accident, and then the other two were just a little frustration with myself. So, I think I could have done a better job keeping my emotions in check, but at the same time, like, really? The Fever are set for a rematch against the Connecticut Sun after a humiliating 93-69 road loss in the opening game of the WNBA playoffs. Clark struggled from the field, making just four of her 17 shots while scoring 11 points. 
We didn't play well, didn't play to the level we're capable of playing, Clark said. We didn't shoot the ball like we're capable of. We're capable of winning this game. Marina Marbury led the way with 27 points off the bench for the Sun, who are minus 6.5 favorites against the Fever on Wednesday. Caitlin Clark pointed a finger at the media when she was asked about her relationship with Chicago Sky star Angel Reese. Two of the WNBA's brightest stars will do battle again on Sunday when the Indiana Fever travel to face the Chicago Sky. The previous two encounters this season have seen Clark and the Fever come out on top on both occasions, winning 71-70 and 91-83 earlier this month. Both games have been fought with a ferocious approach, and controversy has surrounded their recent battles on the court. Clark has been subject to physical defensive from opposition players this year, including from Reese and her Sky teammates. In the second clash two weeks later, Reese caught Clark in the head as she tried to block a shot at the rim and was given a flagrant foul. Following the game, the power forward hit out at the officials, suggesting Clark gets a special whistle from referees to protect her.